Well then, so for the third time, <laughs> the first game is gonna be played on Midgaf on the match between Joe and Soloturk, and it's gonna be between Isis and Poseidon, so yeah, let's not talk about it anymore. And already started the Fog of War on as well, as of course the villagers right now properly going for the berries and gonna be coming for the dock, of course a bit more to the Green. south in here as well for Joe. So of course Joe as an Isis uh, is gonna be having Quite a nice map, uh, is basically any water map is pretty good for any Egyptian whatsoever. So they're just gonna be spamming dogs everywhere, getting not only efficiency but also pretty solid defense of all of those spots. But otherwise his gold could have been slightly better, but it's not also tragic either. Not tragic either, because having the tower right next to it and also this straggler is kinda nice. You could be like placing a few houses there, maybe even a temple is gonna fit in between probably. If not there, then here it could definitely could. And the wall is not gonna be that hard, which means that Joe's map is gonna be quite fine, fine for him. Otherwise, we're gonna be switching as we are also looking at the second DC being reasonably close by. That's kinda alright. Is he having like gold ne nearby? Actually, yes. Actually, yes, he does. He does have gold mines reasonably close by, especially this one is very nice, considering he can go like for this DC and Migro in the middle of the way if he wants to. And if he's not under any, any pressure, he can go even more forward as this elk. Well, has been already lured by the enemy lure, so let's look at that and how the enemy side of the map is looking. Well then, scouting inside the enemy base so that he can probably see where the enemy is. He's gonna be getting a lot of needless damage, of course, into the Catalyst boss in there for that. But otherwise, he's having a pretty good spot with the th three sum and maybe even some double. Yeah, it's a full-on double for the fishies in there, but otherwise, of course, it's usually best on Mediterranean to go into the corners, or rather, Midgard literally the opposite map on the midgard going through corners as you are having better chances of having more fishing spots in there of course the gold is rather terrible rather terrible all things considered because this is in range of arrow ships from here most definitely most definitely so he will have to be careful about that and if joe will be belligerent on the water a whole lot more than just basically guarding his own fishing spots then solo Turk might be in for a bit of a surprise and pretty tough game for himself Let's turn off the fog of four as the TCs for him are. This one is nice. This one is reasonably nice, gonna protect it from the right side. And if he wants to, he's gonna be easily cutting through the forest and getting this gold, which is really close. And the next one, kind of behind all the trees in there. So, not really all that ideal, but really, this combination, this duo, is very sweet for him. On the left side, it's kind of similar with this TC and this gold. He will have to cut through the forest yet again so that he has some kind of easy escape route into the TC if he needs to, if he's gonna be under attack by Chariot Archers a bit later. But another gold mine quite close by is also gonna be helpful. Though, of course, walling it up is gonna be always difficult. So don't really expect that too much. Plenty of golds are on the left, a whole lot closer, I'm thinking, and in slightly better position for Joe. So I would be expecting that Hilly, he will be slightly aiming towards the left side. The TC is nicely positioned, the golds are not really how bad, and considering how many are there, if he's gonna be Scouting that properly, he really should be knowing that this is a pretty good spot for him to be at. The one on the right is not really bad either, has to be said, uh, but it's slightly more open, I'm thinking. So he might be really well advised to take the left side if he actually wants to, and if he needs some TC sometime soon. Okay, so 5% building crush armor, that's always useful. To stay a bit longer. If they are under assault, villagers kill animals in single shot. Yeah, well, that's not really great. Maybe if somebody loses the water, then he could be continuing with the wall races, and they're not gonna be any threat whatsoever. Yeah, they're kinda happy. <laughs> Smiling in there. <laughs> with all the tusks shining in the bright light. So there we are. It's gonna be 3.30 as the dogs are coming forward. You can see a soldier coming exactly for the corner of the map. That's where all the... Fishies are gonna be concentrating as the one at the bottom would be also kind of sweet, but it might be coming just a bit later. But this one is already gonna be quite fine for him. For the opponent, he already does have the other dock in the opposite corner pretty much, but also in this corner it's gonna be going. So yeah, he's gonna be having very sweet economy and that's exactly why Egyptians are so strong. Especially because he's going for this one with villager. Usually when you are building docks so far away, they are gonna be built by a fishing boat, so that is slightly surprising. So many marine ra marine life here. With salmon, perch, and even some orcas. Right into the depths, going back there. Uh, but yeah, this is slightly curious. So, because the villager is very far away. So what is he like gonna be doing next? Right now, walking minute into his base without doing anything. 
I guess so. That's gonna be her ordeal for the time being. But Hermes is coming forward for 5 minute advance for Solo Turk. Whereas Joe is still not advancing, so he seems to be heading into... This is almost looking like a fast heroic, pretty much. Gearing. Not really any kind of significant fight on the water. As they are not gonna be surprised by anything like that. Because you can see right now, even Villager coming to the right side. Yet again, Villager. Like, why are you sending... Village is that far away. Oh yeah, this is the reason. Okay, right now I see it. Right now I see the reason. The reason is because he wants to basically make some beachheads on the water. So that his opponent cannot really go away or rather around all that easily. He's forced to fight here. Because with just uh, it's just a fishing boat, it would be taking, taking really long. It uh, taking a really long time to build it up. Whereas Villager, even though she's still pretty slow as an Egyptian, she's still gonna be quite a bit faster and it's gonna be reason for it well right now he's gonna be losing a lot of gathering time with two villages right there but still he does have plenty of fishing boats to basically make up for that so in that case doesn't really matter too much now does it okay, hippocampus scouting just having a look how many dogs and how many fishing boats and everything is his opponent having and to be honest it seems like that maybe even the poseidon doesn't want to fight for the water all that much yeah, I can see he's absolutely not interested. He doesn't really want to do that at all. He just right now already having poor Sain. As Anubis is coming forward, which is definitely signaling that Joe wants to fight for the water and expects the fight for it. Expects that quite a bit. Uh, Hagrid, that's a pretty good point. Actually, Egyptians can build the dogs at basically the same speed with the villager because it will, of course it would be quite unfair if that wasn't possible in the early game to be just putting them down quite significantly and screwing their build orders even though maybe they could, they could still deal with that they could maybe still deal with that because they are having empowerment so if you could get with empowerment on the 100 percent then i think it would be pretty much fine but anyway there we go that was a bit of a information from hagrid to Thank you very much for that. Uh, so of course, Joe is coming right now for the prosperity. That's going to be the faster heroic from him. And we have heard Anubite. Yeah, here. He did receive a bit of damage from something. Not sure if it was the... No, it was probably the centaur. But the centaur himself <laughs> almost got killed. Not good. Not good for him. As right now, of course, Anubite is going to be scouting on the left side. Scouting on the left side, whereas on the right side is scouting on the water. And it really seems like that right now Joe is gonna be wanting to fight for the water. You can see Cabinet is coming forward. But Rerames are already there for Solo Truk, at least for a bit of a defense. So Solo Truk doesn't want to fight it that much. But in the end it's gonna be developing into full-fledged water fight in there. But with Joe having, of course, quite a significant advantage. Because, of course, right now he's gonna be clicking into... Come on! He could have clicked into Heroic Age already. Where are you clicking on there? And I don't want DC, alright. Hmm. That is an interesting choice because it seemed like he was heading into the heroic cage, but he in the end is not gonna be doing anything like that. Or at least he's gonna be denying that. Delaying that rather. Right now he's gonna be having the resources almost again. Katasko was dead. Second DC and heroic is gonna be coming anyway. Does he have Oh Alright? Does he have the armory somewhere? No, he doesn't. Okay. Uh, now that's weird. <laughs> now that is a solid misplay. That is an absolutely solid misplay by Joe at this point. Because he is right now gonna be sitting on the resources for Heroic for good two minutes. For good two minutes. For basically no reason. Because right now his economy cannot support more cabinets all that much. You can see right now that he's not really having enough wood in there. He's having enough gold. And the food is just absolutely swimming in there. And of course with the shooting dogs, come on, deposit a few of those here. Please do that. He's also housed <laughs> quite horribly. So this game didn't really catch him in any kind of good moment. Seems like he was coming for this TC as well. He was coming for, the, for this one as well, which seems to be, of course, leading into at least one villager there. But he might be actually really fighting him. Yeah, he doesn't have all that many hit points. So if Solotrug is not paying attention, which he definitely isn't, yeah, this poor centaur is gonna be completely, completely pushed into the salami here. And of course, right now, one villager there, that's definitely a pretty good trade for the TC right now being finished, of course. Second DC gonna be finished also for Solotrug without any kind of problem with already the economy. Or rather, already the barracks coming forward for Joe. So that he is at least a bit prepared for what is to come. But right now the problem is that he is out of gold. He has basically... <laughs> yeah, he has run out of the gold. Because he is 
after prosperity for quite a bit and even if, if he finishes the armory right now like it's gonna be problematic for him to get enough if he wants to produce and continue producing of course all the cabinets so that might be a bit of an issue especially with the auto queue still being here please turn it off please turn it off if you want to advance because <laughs> you don't have all that much income on the go and right now it's gonna be getting better as even Tezos is right now discovering that this is already done but well Bit of a bit more of an efficiency and optimal gameplay could have been done by Joe. And I'm really thinking that he should have been in Heroic Age for the past at least minute and a half already. But he still isn't. Thank you very much, Clan Chaura, for the host. Hope that everybody new coming is gonna be enjoying the last match that I'm gonna be streaming today. And of course, there are still more games to come after this one. Alright, so finally Neft is coming forward quite about two minutes later than he should have. Unfortunate for Joe because at this point the game could have been probably already resolved with minute in into a heroic cage with of course some war badges coming forward and completely decimating all of those dock units from the Greek. But otherwise of course Pursain is already in so the water economy is really getting strong and I wouldn't be surprised if Joe was just basically jumping into Mythic because he will be having plenty of plenty of food but the question is, is the gold. The question is definitely the gold because right now he doesn't have even shaft mine yet. Is yet he's coming for that. Oh yeah, he is. Okay, so Shaft Mine is gonna be of course helping in all the resources gathering. And of course plenty of warning coming forward because he kind of wants to be sure that he knows when his opponent is gonna be knocking on the door and trying to kill him. As right now, some first epigons there are already mediums. That's very well played. Is Solotruk advancing as well? No, he isn't. But oh well, this is not gonna be built fast enough. Whereas Solotruk is gonna be exactly in the correct time here. So is this gonna be like forcing ancestors? I wouldn't think so necessarily. Especially with the two heroes in that, that would be just really kind of weird. So I don't expect that, but of course, the gold gathering being disrupted like here. No, like here. So Otruk probably doesn't realize how crucial that is. Because that will be slowing down, of course, the mythic age as well for the opponent. And that is, I think, quite important. As Plague of Serpent has been cast right in front of the enemy dock. That, like, wasn't needed. No, I, I was more expecting he will be protecting the gold here. I think that it would be making sense, but here, like, why? He's already pretty much won the water <laughs> with only the cabinets, and right now with his, his heroic age, he's of course gonna be producing even some few more war barges, and the water is gonna be just completely done. Okay, one cabinet, cabinet dying, more alive, with Leviathan coming forward as well to the top side, with Solotruk having absolutely no chance of advancing into the next age, whereas Joe, yeah, well, right now not also advancing into the mythic as soon as he maybe thought that he could potentially could be. So some barracks with spearmen against the horses of course, with siege works on the siege towers and Migdal coming forward. Okay, maybe he could have been a bit more interested in the gold, go a bit more to the left, but probably right now he doesn't want to really pay or rather lure too much attention to it. He just wants to basically make sure that he finishes with that without risking anything more. It's kind of understandable and solid approach to the situation in that. Of course the water economy is gonna be right now gone for Solotur as he doesn't have enough to defend against the problems that are coming, especially like the Leviathan and quite probably even some war barges that might still be coming. You can see even Sultan for already researched and this is solid army. This is a solid army. But what Solotur is not gonna be expecting is gonna be this Migdol being so close by. Yeah right now Joe definitely has to read it. This is the correct decision for him. And are there some extra no, no, no extra upgrades from, for example, Armory. You can see Medium Spearman, but Serpent Spears already coming forward. So that's actually a pretty solid upgrade for the Spearman against the Horses. That's gonna be a bit of a problem for Solo Turk. As well, what is he hidden, hidden in there? Oh yeah, he's taking the Priest to safety. He doesn't want to lose them. That's quite a sensible de decision because, of course, they are 200 gold. 200 gold together. And that is quite a solid amount. So right now they're gonna be coming forward and trying to destroy the town center, but there are plenty of villages. So, of course, plenty of chariot archers are gonna be needed, not only in this fight, but also, also, of course, trying to get rid of the villages that are destroying all the siege towers here. Right, so how this is gonna be going? Well, so far, kinda expected. Of course, Epicons, Mediums are gonna be even in. So that is not much of a surprise, even against the nicely upgraded spearmen have been present. But of course on the water, that's not much of a question. You can see that even Solotruk is not fighting for that. But in that case, Joe should be really trying to close it, out, close it up as soon as possible. Because it is eating quite significantly into his population limit. Quite a solid army. And at this point, he probably can just basically wait 
for a populated army and well pgs right now have in though it's not much Get of an army because of all Get the boats and all the extra English. population limit on the water oh well slaughter is still having some population extra in there that he doesn't need as well as joy straight i'm starting with the trade also so this is already looking like a solid situation maybe for ancestor and eclipse to attack on the TC, but he will somehow need to get rid of the Tezos and of course of all the villages that are gonna be very annoying. Well, he doesn't have Eclipse, of course, because he went with Anubis thinking it's gonna be a bit more war to fight than that actually in the end was. Okay, Spearman have been upgraded into Heavy. Otherwise, no extra armor upgrades for the opponent. It seems to be pretty much the same. Pretty much the same as another barracks has been built here and everything is on auto queue. So yeah, everything is coming forward, so let's see. Let's see if this is gonna be something that actually right now Joe can handle. Though, well, he definitely could be using a whole lot more population limit here. But he could be using a whole lot more siege towers. Right now, unfortunately, it seems like that he actually switched off auto queue on siege towers. That's gonna be quite a costly mistake because right now he's gonna be just a normal anyway. army. One siege tower that is more or less dead. And that's pretty much it. So, like, what is he gonna, what is he gonna be do, doing at this point against this solid army growing for Slaughterk? And apparently, with armory coming forward as well, he might be advancing into Heroic Age as he's having the medium Toxotine upgrade just now. Yeah, yeah, Dionysus is coming forward quite well. Quite well indeed, as the water is just continuing to be finished. Oh, well, just, I mean, just deal, deal with this. Just deal with this. Because if you don't, then you're still giving your opponent the chance to build a few pesky units and go and annoy you. Especially right now with Dionysus, that's gonna be Skilla. And Skillas could be really overturning and somehow, really, maybe even turn the water around. It's not really all that impossible. But for that, he would have to produce plenty more. Plenty more villages on over on... Uh, how is it called? On favor, which he doesn't, or other doesn't. <laughs> between doesn't and isn't, so VG isn't. Legend. As here we are seeing a lot of, of course, god powers being used. First it was bronze, it was definitely well used, because he was uh, having still solid army, and he was hoping that he can actually push against the enemy, and it of course lured in all of those ancestors, and against that, there's absolutely no point in fighting against those, especially since he doesn't have the heroes, or well, he does have Hippolyta, Tezus is there as well. So I mean, of course, you're gonna be completely killing the ancestors, but question is, if with bronze, it wouldn't be worthwhile to fight it, because the army for Joe wasn't that huge. Right now he has advanced into mythical age, he's gonna be having solid wall here. That is a very nice wall, and you can prevent those walling if you basically put the Hippicon exactly in the path, into the foundation. You can prevent it even in ceasefire, and that's exactly what should have happened from Solotirk, but it didn't, and he's gonna be definitely paying for that. Because siege are coming forward, and you can imagine what's gonna happen with this wall here okay. and this little forest. Catapults right there or there, and goodbye, TC. You are not gonna be standing here for much longer. Son of Osiris is already in, of course, with also the mummy that is gonna be getting rid of all the big units in there. For example, could be getting rid of the Hydra as well. But that's gonna be kinda easy picking for Son of Osiris as well. You can see right now he sent him there, but come on, careful about this one. A Solotrug is unfortunately not noticing that he could be getting so many free shots. So many free, free shots on this son of a god. Yeah, well, he definitely is gonna be missing those. Because right now he should have also got new fighting, because of course he was having still the bronze. And it was quite a bit of advantage. Right now he does have at least the heavy hippicons, that's a very good upgrade at this point. And the bronze line, or rather the copper line in full, waiting for the bronze upgrades in there. As on the other hand though, champion spearman already in. With bronze weapons, copper mail and copper shields as well, so the upgrades are coming for Joe very well indeed also. But of course, Solotruk is not giving up, he is realizing the situation. With tower coming up, so is right now gonna be putting up one Joe, but much more importantly the fortified TC, that's a very nice upgrade. With masons there as well, and of course the relic for the better building crush armor against siege, so that's gonna be helping it. Keep the TC alive for a bit longer, but of course, quite inevitably, those catapults are gonna be just a bit too hard to deal with, especially since there's gonna be like almost no counterplay for Solo Turk. Pretty much none counterplay whatsoever, because he cannot get through the walls in there, and he seems to be very, very, very well positioned. And it's not gonna be even villages really able to come through. And yeah, well, TC shooting at it, he can be just positioning a bit further, and he is gonna be absolutely fine. Okay, so this battle, or rather, this battlefield is gonna be kinda owned by Joe at this point, because there's no way that Solotruk is gonna be coming forward, especially with the mercenaries, well, 
They're coming quite a long ways. Not gonna be surviving too long here, but probably long enough. As the high is coming forward for Solotruk as well. But much more importantly, the water is at this point pretty much done. You can see Solotruk is not even going back onto it on the left side. As right now, those votes are finally getting deleted because Joe is recognizing that the water is having really no importance at this point, or rather, he doesn't have to fight for it anymore. As Solotruk is at either, and he needs all the population limit exactly in this battlefield as he is gonna be also, of course, using the mercenaries to supply even more population limit than he already is. And he is an ISIS, so extra population limit, of course, from the each TC that he's having. Okay, so TC is down right now for Soloto, so that's gonna be uh, getting into a very difficult position for him. But with the Hephaestus coming forward, it still might somehow work. Because Greeks are yeah, like the civilization that can overcome 2 versus 4 TCs even. And 2 versus 3 is, to be honest, not really that bad yet. <laughs> it's not really that bad yet. It will probably be getting quite a bit worse because, of course, right now uh, all the upgrades for Joe are gonna be coming forward, especially the TC being right now taken. You know, Son of Osiris is gonna be trying to empower that with this upgrade into City of the Dead. Better Pierce damage, better hit points. Or does it actually improve hit points for Son of Osiris? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. He's right now having 660. He was having like 5, whatever, 58 or something like that. If I remember correctly, the last time I was looking at him. Which means that this TC, well, it's gonna be coming up quite easily. Uh, though... Right now, Son of Osiris will definitely have to be careful. Right now, he can start shooting already. Like, why not? He can also get rid of the Colossus, but he also should be producing at least a few more. A few more boom mummies. And apparently, this TC is not gonna be as easy as I initially thought. Yep, those villagers and mainly, mainly this big dude with the big sword and everything on him. He's gonna be taking care of that and maybe giving Solotruk a second chance on taking it. So let's see if he's gonna be able to do so, but he doesn't have any kind of useful god powers. Like literally none. Absolutely none available. But this is of course something that you need to do as any player. If you are trying to take a TC that is in the battlefield, then you need to take ownage or rather ownership of it. <laughs> ownage. <laughs> ownership of it by gradually taking the grounds by towers and basically sticking on it and really giving you advantage bit by bit. I don't know because at this point what Joe needs is basically keep his opponent of the TC of course but right now even though he's killing all the military buildings he's of course producing military out of them with all the militias you can see they are doing a pretty good job and they are of course quite nice basically trash units into the battlefield here uh, but it of course means that if Solotruk is in rebuilding fast enough but well, he seems to be having still plenty he seems to be rebuilding, but not really fast enough in there. He's even coming for the temple right at the back. Having an even fortress there, that's a nice one. He's gonna be helping, of course, with the Petroboy that we have seen a bit before. Then he... Ah, right now was my actually idea what I wanted to do, but oh well, this is actually kind of fun. Yeah, this gold... <laughs> unfortunately, it's a bit too late because the gold is gone, literally. So, <laughs> good idea by Joe, but unfortunately too late. Those guys are gonna already gonna be running somewhere else, maybe here, attempting to destroy all of the barracks in there or something like that. But it's really looking kind of grim because we don't see really upgrades coming too much for a solo turk. You can see that right now he's having at least the bronze, bronze, and iron weapons. But I'm right now looking at champion hippogons in there. That is definitely missing, and that is a pretty huge upgrade as his opponent is already a champion, both spearmen and chariots, and he is missing irons though. He is all bronze, so maybe still. That could be an opening, because if Solotruk can upgrade himself a bit better, there's gonna be another really strong reason why he could be having a chance against his opponent still. But yeah, well, apparently, he doesn't think so. He doesn't think so at this point, and Joe is gonna be claiming the first game after quite a solid fight. Quite a solid fight on Midgard. Nice idea at the end, and again, too late. <laughs> too late to come there. You can see he was having another one in the middle. The siege works, basically building the wall, and he will be doing what he did. At the top side, he will be just producing a few catapults here and getting rid of all the buildings. Though the TC is too far away, he wouldn't be able to shoot at the TC, but he would be able to get rid of all of those military buildings. That would be kind of the same good. The same good, pretty much. Okay, that was a nice game. Let's check into the post game. Well, Joe gonna be winning all of that, quite convincingly, convincingly as you can see. Well, that economical boost from the water, he definitely used it properly. It was like owning half of the map of fishies without any kind of disturbance at all. 
without any kind of disturbance at all. Wasn't really that fast hero. It could have been like two minutes faster. <laughs> and it would have been a 2TC faster hero as it should have been. Yeah, with two TCs you can advance at about 8.39 minutes. If you are undisturbed, which Joe pretty much was. So yeah, he kinda messed up in there. But in the end, in the end, really cost him the game. So, good job. <laughs> good job anyway. GG.